Hey guys, James with Jetty USA, Esprit Tech. Thanks for sticking around for the programming portion of the video. As Casey explained, it's really important to make sure you're always set up and logging your flights. That way, if you do need to get back to it, if you're, if you're setting up a model or if something happens and you need to go back and take a look at what happened, you've always got access to it. So I'm gonna go through and show you real quickly how to get the logging set up. You've got a couple of options and we'll explain that as we go. I'm gonna go into the menu. Uh, we're going to go into our advanced properties and we're going to click on other model options. Uh, right there in that top group of items, the bottom item is start logging switch. And there's a couple of things you can do. If you set a switch here, you're going to need to remember to always throw that switch at the beginning of the flight. For those of you guys with a very good pre-flight routine, this might be fine. Problem I find is you're so excited either doing a hot start, you know, or hot refueling, or throwing a new pack and getting up in the air, it's very easy to forget to change uh, or to, to throw that switch and start a new log. So it's much easier if you leave it set to auto, which you'll notice the mode right below the start logging switch uh, is set to auto. Uh, keep in mind that this is gonna create a log every time that you fly. When you power down the model, power up the model, it's gonna create a new log. In order to do that though, there's a couple of requirements and the biggest one is going to be to add a timer to the model. So I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna go all the way back out to the main menu, go into timers and sensors. We're gonna click on timers and we're gonna add a timer. By adding this timer, you're giving uh, creating something for the system to base the log on. Anytime the timer is running, the log is running. Uh, without that timer, it doesn't know when to start and stop the logs. Uh, one quick thing, it needs to be a free running timer. If you're already using a timer for your model for something else, whether it's flight time or battery time or whatever you're using it for, go ahead and set up a second timer on the model. Uh, you'll set that timer to free running so that it doesn't stop with whatever switch that you use it through. Uh, you physically have to stop it after the flight, and we'll show you how to do that as well. So you'll set the timer to free running. I will typically use uh, my throttle stick as my switch. Your throttle comes preset to go on and off at 50%. It's really nice because when you're taking off for the first time, you taxi out, or when you're on the ground and you go into your idle up, it's automatically going to move that with your stick at center. If so long as it's free running, it won't stop if you come down below center. So if you're using it in a helicopter and this is for collective, uh, you don't have to worry about your negative collective shutting off the timer so long as you're set to free running. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on switch, brings up select input control, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it my throttle. And you'll see that my switch position on this one is a little high. So one of the things we need to make sure that we're going to do is go into sticks and switches setup. So I'm gonna back all the way out into the advanced properties again, into sticks and switches setup. I'm gonna to go to that P4. I'm gonna go ahead and make my switch position 50% on both sides. That will allow me to pick that timer up or start that timer at 50% throttle. Now you'll see in that menu, as soon as I pass over, it goes into position I wanted to go in. So we'll go ahead and hit escape. We'll go into the main menu. We're going to hit stop and clear. That stops and the data stops the log and stops the timer from running. All of those things at the same time. Now I'm going to go ahead and transition uh, over half throttle and we'll see a blue circle start uh, uh, flashing on the screen. On the monochromatic screen, that'll be a dark circle at the very top of the screen next to your flight mode announcement uh, or the word default if you're not using flight modes. So long as that's flashing, you're running logs, you're creating uh, data for you to look at later. When you're finished with the flight, you come back to a closed throttle. You'll notice the timer continues to run as well as the log continuing. If you want to stop that log, you simply hit stop, stops that log, and you can move on, change the batteries, and start a new log by throttling up again. If you want to view those logs, all you'll need to do is from the front screen, hit function button five, corresponds to clear. It'll become a graph symbol. Hit that button again, and you'll get into the data analyzer. Select the file that you want to pull a log from. Select the, the log that you want to view. Down at the bottom, you simply select the variables that you would like to look at. 
once you have those variables selected, you hit the graph sign, and if there were data available, uh, it would graph that. We were not connected to an aircraft, so we weren't collecting data, so there's nothing to display. But that's the basic rundown on how you'll set up your logging, how you'll use your logging. If you have any other, other questions, just reach out to us at Esprit Tech or Jetty USA. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.